So as many of you know, and many of you might not know, when you work with SQLite, SQLite has no date, data type uh, for its table columns. And so you might ask yourself the question, how do we get dates into and out of our tables in SQLite? I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going back to our Python playlist and we're going to take a look at uh, SQLite and how to get dates in and out of our uh, fields in SQLite uh, tables. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to look at two ways to, to use dates with SQLite. The first is sort of like the older way uh, that has been used for a very long time with SQLite. And uh, the second way is going to be a new way using Unix Epoch. Uh, which is a way of storing dates as integers, which is really awesome, and I'm happy to show it today. Let's get to it. Looking for downloads of code and other various uh, files and things that I've used in these videos, make sure to check out my downloads page. The link is in the description. Okay, guys, so this is a pretty fun one this week. We're working with our SQLite database, and I'm just going to create a new file here from idle. And uh, I'm going to save that as uh, SQLite dates, uh, dot py. I will put this file on my new download site, so make sure you check that out uh, from the links in the description, and uh, we can get started. So I'm going to import SQLite 3 here, and I'm just going to um, make a note that um, uh, you want to make sure that you, you get your SQLite up to 3.38 or higher if you want to use the new uh, uh, Unix Epoch uh, function, which is awesome, and it allows you to, uh, to store your, your dates as integers very seamlessly, um, and, it's a, and it's a method that's used in other programming languages and other databases, and so it is a really great uh, function for us to use uh, for our dates. And so getting started here, I'm just going to give some feedback to the console there. I'm going to say print starting, and then I'll create a connection variable as none there, and uh, my file name uh, with uh, my file location for my SQLite database. If you don't have one there, it will create one automatically. Um, since uh, this is nice integration with Python, it's just going to go and create that uh, file if you don't have one there. And, uh, and then I'm going to uh, start our try, accept, finally blocks. And those are going to allow us to uh, handle if there's an exception that comes up, uh, something that breaks our code, and it's going to handle it gracefully, and it's going to close that connection to our uh, SQLite database if there is one there. And uh, that's exactly uh, what we want to see. And so once I create my connection, uh, cnn equal sqlite3.connect there, uh, and I'll put the file name in and then uh, give some feedback saying I'm connected. I can create my cursor, uh, which is cs equals cnn.cursor, and then my SQL string here that I'm uh, doing, it's going to create a table uh, with uh, a few fields in it. Um, it'll have an ID field, which is an integer, and then just a text date, and then an integer, integer date, uh, which will store uh, dates in, and then I'll put a comment text field sort of on the end there, um, just so that we can insert some, uh, we can insert some, some data into there, and we can see the text date, uh, we can see the integer date, and then we can see how to use uh, functions, which is very simple to uh, insert dates into our table and get them back out again. So I'll do a cs.execute SQL there, which is going to uh, create that table. Um, that, I believe, does not require a commit uh, since it's DDL. It will actually create the, uh, create the table without a, without a commit. Um, and uh, I'll give some feedback uh, created and then I'll do our insert statement uh, where we're going to insert um, into this, ta this date table and we're going to say uh, SQL is 
equal to insert into my dates and then we'll do uh, we'll we'll put our our uh, integer uh, date ID in there um, and our text date our int int date and our comment field and then we can sort of plunk some values in there and what we'll do is we'll uh, just put in one for our for our key and then we're going to use the date function here so date is going to give you the truncated date which just has the the date it doesn't have any time attached to it and in this case I, I can I can actually just put in the string if I want I can put in 2022-08-15 uh, but if I put the date around that um, it's going to actually um, you know put it through the function and it's going to store it in there as a date and then for the integer date I'm going to put in a similar kind of date but I'm going to use the unix epoch function which is going to give the the uh, the number of seconds from like 1970 uh, I, I think it's September 1st or something like that uh, which is unix epoch and that's going to give us uh, the an integer for our date and then I'll put a example one on there uh, for the comment and so that's going to store two different kinds of dates one as a text one as as an integer and then I'm going to execute that uh, using uh, with the cursor cs.execute and then what I'll do after that I'm just going to paste the same two lines of code and I'll change them a little bit um, so that we're putting in a different kind of or a different date I should say and um, and so I'll put in a two and I'll put in Unix epoch with uh, a, a timestamp on it as well, um, and uh, there we go. We've got uh, Unix epoch with uh, 2314. That's 11:14 p.m. as our example two, and then I'll copy that, and we're just going to put in three records here, I guess, and just so that we can demonstrate this, um, and then I'll I'll do uh, uh, number three. And I'll use the date function again, um, and uh, and then I'll do uh, uh, you know 0822 for August, and uh, you know 1455, and uh, with 01 seconds on it, and uh, and then I'll do kind of a similar thing with Unix epoch here, and uh, I'll do 2022 0930. And uh, 2314, I'll change that to 0145 um, and some seconds on there, say uh, 14 seconds as, as example three. And, uh, and so that's going to insert um, dates into our table. And then uh, I'm going to put a cnn.commit on there so that those records are committed. And in, in the database, we do a commit operation, and that's going to save that data. So we can move on from there. And I'll give some feedback to the user, uh, print inserted. And, uh, and then what we can do from there is we can do, you know, just to test this out before we do anything further here, we can do select star from my dates, uh, which is a very simple select statement. It's going to grab everything from that table. And then we can use the uh, cursor to get that data for us uh, so that we can sort of take a look and see um, we can take a look and see uh, what it looks like uh, when we select from our my dates table. And so I can say uh, records equals cs.execute SQL and then I can just go for record in records, uh, print the record. That's sort of the simplest way of retrieving a little bit of data, data from the database. And then I'll finish our accept block here, or our try accept and finally blocks. Uh, I'm going to put an accept exception as E uh, on there. And then if we get an exception, I'm just going to print the exception out to just in case I broke something here. And I'll do a finally block and I'll say if there's a connection, then, then close that connection. And then I'll put done at the very end. Um, and I will actually, I'll put after our, our connection.close here, um, I'll put uh, connection closed. Um, just in case something breaks along the way, then you can, you can see just before your error message, uh, you know, how far 
uh, your procedure got. There's our exception. We'll just print it, and uh, and then uh, you know we'll close that connection if if the uh, uh, connection is open. Um, so that kind of um, finishes our block here, and we can go ahead and test this out. So I'm going to hit F5 here, and uh, F5 is going to um, run our code. Oh, that went very quickly. Uh, okay, so there we go. We've got our um, starting database connected, create insert, uh, created and inserted, and then we're reading those uh, those uh, date values, and you can see that the uh, the uh, Unix dates are in fact integers, and and uh, the text dates are in fact stored as as text dates. One thing you might notice is that um, you know we've been using our date function there, uh, and that actually truncates the date. So if we put hours and minutes on there, it actually um, it actually remove those. <laughs> so I think I, I need to make one more um, example here, where where we actually get some date time in there. So. This is very important. Um, I kind of missed that one, so I'll put four in for our ID, and I'll put in a date time, uh, and so so that we actually, uh, you know, have our date time in our text date. And there we go. So I'll, I'll comment out these other execute statements because we're not going to add the records again. And this will add one more record um, that has um, that actually has some time on it for our date. Uh, and that's going to be awesome. So I'll hit F5 again, and now you can see there now we have our text date, and it has the time down to the second, and you can go further. Um, there are many date formats. I'm going to put a link in the description uh, for that, so make sure uh, that you look for that, and you can see how I just used date on these ones, and it got truncated off the time and the, and the, like the hour and minute, and second got truncated off, because I use date, but you can use date or date time depending on what you need, and uh, and uh, that's exactly what we want to see there. But you will notice that Unix Epoch was used the same way regardless of how we put in the date, whether it was just a date or had hours and minutes and seconds on it, it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, Unix Epoch, that function is just going to get in there and find out uh, what the integer is for that value, and it's going to plunk, and it will plunk it in there for you. Um, so we can do, uh, we can look at our um, data another way here. So the question is sort of how do we get the the date out of our integer field? So now we want to select it because we don't want to see that integer date when we do a query to give to our users or whatever. Uh, we don't want to give them that integer date. We want to give them a nice, uh, you know, a nice date. Um, and so what we can do is we can do select date time. So we can use that date time function, except this time we're going to pass in the integer. And we're going to say that the format of that is Unix Epoch. And you can see how that date time function, we've used it twice now. So we passed in a string, but this time we're passing in an integer. I'll save that as I hit F5 here. And then uh, now you can see that it's passing out the 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 string values of the date, which is uh, you know which is human readable, and that's exactly what we want to see there. So if I if I change that to just date and I reran it, um, then uh, it'll truncate that date off of there, um, and you can see there's our our date uh, functions without the hour and minute and second. So there are many date formats that you can request back from the function, so make sure that you go and check out the links I put in the description that will have uh, many different uh, date precision and formatting options uh, for you to use in your project. And that's how you can use dates with SQLite in Python. Looking for additional resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.